Hey there guys, how's it going? Welcome back to my Spider-Man review series. So, those of you who've been following my channel will know that I've been reviewing pretty much every Spider-Man movie. Um, I started this series sometime last year and, yeah, I didn't get back to it till you know, quite recently. And, yeah, I recently reviewed The Amazing Spider-Man 1, which was the, um, the one before this. And, if you guys saw my review for that one, then you'll know that I wasn't a fan of that movie. I didn't really like it at all. Gave it a 3 out of 10. Um, I felt that my, my biggest problem with that movie was the casting. I didn't really like Andrew Garfield's performance as Spider-Man. I didn't really think any of the cast were suited to the characters. I thought that the plot was a little bit generic and a little bit, you know, just a little bit bland. And even some of the special effects in that movie, I think, were overrated too. And I just, for as much as I loved some of the older Spider-Man movies, like I loved the Sam Raimi movies, for example, that movie to me just didn't stand up you know, to scrutiny by comparison. Now, this is the sequel which came out two years after. This one came out in um, 2014, I believe. And to be honest, whereas there are a couple of improvements here, you know, just a couple of things they did uh, improve on from the first movie, a couple of criticisms that they listened to, the vast majority of the changes they made, however, were not improvements. This is actually a really bad movie. And in fact, I would go as so far as say that the first movie was actually better than this one. Not better by much, but definitely better. So let's get stuck in. So, my main problem with this movie, again, like I said, my, my main problem with the first movie was the cast. I didn't really agree with the casting, but this time I, I just kind of decided to put that aside because, I mean, look, they already established the world now, they'd established the character, you know, they had their cast there and um, they had to do the best they could with it, basically. I mean, there was no point rebooting it all because I didn't like the cast of the first movie. But i got to be honest, my main problem with this movie is the pacing of it. This movie is incredibly, and I mean incredibly boring. Um, I mean, it's, it's well over two hours long, and there's a lot about this movie, like a lot of scenes that I felt were completely unnecessary and didn't add anything to the plot. You know, there was plenty of scenes of Peter Parker just sitting around and doing nothing and, you know, thinking to himself and stuff like that. There are also, like, a couple of really unnecessary subplots. Um, one, of the, one of the things that people were concerned about going into the movie was villain overload because there was three villains. But that actually turned out to be... Not 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 so much a problem per se, but it, in a way it just felt a bit weird because although it was advertised as there being three, you know, three villains of the movie, Rhino, who's one of the villains who's advertised, who by the way is one of my personal favourite Spider-Man villains, I always found him hilarious. Hey, wait! So I'm a Rhino, you're a Scorpion, and he's an octopus. What's a Mysterio? <laughs> So, Rhino, you got any threes? Uh, hey! Hey, I got a bingo! Ha ha! You guys think you're so smart, but I won! Ha! Who's your daddy, Doc Ock? Ha ha ha! Victory is mine! You're always laughing at me, but who's crying now, huh? Ha 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 ha! Ha ha! Oh, wait a minute, I made a mistake. Um, you know, he basically shows up in the beginning and has a, a really poorly filmed uh, chase sequence. He doesn't show up again until the very last scene of the movie, so he's barely in the movie at all. And it's really, it's a real shame because I thought that the costume, you know, the rhino suit, you know, and the special effects there were quite impressive and it looked quite cool and it would have been cool to see some um, action scenes involving him but unfortunately he just shows up twice in the movie and does absolutely nothing so that villain was completely wasted um electro who's kind of like the i guess you could say the main villain because that the, you know the main um, bulk of the movie is to do with him didn't like it at all i mean he's played by jamie fox and in one of his worst performances man i mean he's just so over the top he's like a um he, he kind of reminds me of some of the real campy, over-the-top villains we've seen in other films, like like Jesse Eisenberg as Lex Luthor, you know, again, just poorly casted, um, or, or um, Jim Carrey as the Riddler, you know, really over-the-top, really eccentric, and just really weird, and 
again, I just I just didn't like the character at all. Just just a really strange character. And not only that, but I thought the look of the character, the design was ridiculous. I mean, it looks absolutely just stupid. You know, the blue face and the glowing shit. And I mean, there's some <laughs> some cheesy shit like. Um, a scene where he's, he's having a fight scene with Spider-Man. It's like the biggest fight scene of the movie. And <laughs> he's playing music. He he plays like Incy Wincy Spider. And, and Spider-Man's like, I hate that song. And, and although that was pretty funny, it just seemed a little bit weird and cheesy. And the other villain is uh, uh, Green Goblin. It's Harry Osborn's Green Goblin, played by um, Dane DeHaan, who does a pretty poor job. And again, just like... Jamie Foxx as Electro, then they haunt him, he was just completely miscast as um, as Green Goblin. And he doesn't actually get a whole lot of screen time as, as Green Goblin. Basically, they have this sort of side plot where um, Norman Osborn dies of this disease right near the beginning of the movie, and it turns out that Harry Osborn has this same disease, and he's running out of time, and he needs to get Spider-Man's blood to keep himself alive, and look... That plot in itself has been picked apart so many times by so many other reviewers. Basically, it makes no sense because Norman Osborn, with the research that he had and whatnot, he was able to live into his, what, what 60s or whatever, so he's, he's a, a fairly old man. And Harry Osborn's like only a, a, a young man, like late teens, early 20s here, so I don't understand why he was in such a rush to find a cure and why he so desperately needed Spider-Man's blood, you know. And um, obviously him, him and Peter have history and whatnot. And I actually did like some of the scenes of them together, you know, reminiscing about the past when they were kids and whatnot. Those scenes were okay, you know, the acting there was fine. But when it got to a lot of the superhero stuff, you know, where he becomes Green Goblin and all that, it just, it just got really cheesy and stupid. You notice in a theme here, this film's incredibly cheesy. Like, all of the villains are very, like, um, over the top and overly theatrical and... I mean, th this version of Green Goblin has absolutely nothing on um, William Dafoe's Green Goblin from the Spider-Man movie from 2002. I mean, that movie's a masterpiece. And I've, as I've said in the past, that's that's my favourite comic book movie of all time. And that was on the top of my um, top ten comic book movies of all time. Um, I think that movie was a masterpiece. And, and William Dafoe's performance was fantastic as the villain. And even James Franco as... Um, the younger um, Green Goblin, as his son, who's, who's the same character in this movie, um, James Franco did such a better job, in my opinion, as, as this character. Even the design and everything was so much cooler. The special effects were so much better. You know, not as CGI heavy as they are here, and just a very lame and forgettable villain, if I'm being honest. Just, just a load of crap. I've got to be honest, man. Um, that's that's it for the villains. I mean, you know, Electro. He has his own motivation, like he's kind of a nerd and everyone ignores him. And then when he becomes Electro, people don't ignore him anymore and he goes like wild with power. I get it, but I mean, it's just pretty lame. Um, you know, that, that's, that's as far as it goes for the villains. But as far as the plot of this movie, that's another big problem I have with this movie is its plot. There are so many plot holes and so many plot conveniences with movie logic and writing that you can clearly see is not only just to be part of this movie but it's trying to set up other movies in this universe that's the thing that a lot of reviewers caught on to this movie when it came out is this movie kind of felt like an extended trailer more so than a standalone movie and watching this movie in retrospect when you look at like the Dr. Octopus arms and all that stuff and the vulture wings and you see all the references and cameos like you have felicia hardy in this movie played by felicity jones you know um <laughs> all the cameos of, of characters as well as like Ali, you know smite as well um you know there, there are characters who are meant to be in future projects however when you watch this in retrospect knowing that those projects are not going to happen because of how much this movie bombed it's actually kind of sad and it really should stand as a example as why if you're going to make a movie don't make a movie for the sake of trying to set up more movies, you know, trying to set up sequels and a universe and spin-offs and, and, and all that stuff. Like, everybody's trying to be Marvel. We're seeing this with horror movies, like you got that stupid-ass Conjuring universe, you know, all the, all the Blumhouse movies are trying to all be one universe. You know, we're seeing it with, like, King Kong and Godzilla, you know, trying to have their own monsterverse. They even try to kick off the... Um, the Dark Universe with um, that Tom Cruise mummy movie, which 
completely bombed and, and, and that thing just fell flat on its face before it even started. And it's just so many, and of course DC, so many um, movies nowadays, you know, franchises are trying to be a universe. You know, they're trying to copy the success of Marvel. And it just isn't going to work because the best thing about these types of movies, especially comic book movies, and I mentioned this in my top 10 uh, comic book movies uh, video that I did. I mentioned near the start of that video how they have to be standalone movies, okay? There has to be some sort of, you know, some level of passion behind the project. And I didn't see any passion behind this project. To me, this just seemed like Sony were trying to set up sequels and make more money. And that's very disappointing. And it really shows because the writing of this movie is so poor. Like I said, I, I don't really want to um, give away too many spoilers for you guys who might still want to see this. But th there's so many plot conveniences, so many like um, little things that happen which would never happen. But it's movie logic to set up the next plot point. And there's so many Easter eggs and so many references. And it just felt like a, a very corporate product, this one. And it, it's not one that I personally had a lot of fun watching because of that. Because it was just so corporate. And... That's pretty much how I see this movie. I don't. I almost don't even want to talk much more about this movie because I don't think this movie is really worth talking about. It was a very, very sad movie to watch because of all the corporate stuff behind it. And I mean, there's a couple of scenes that I did like, like um, that that was reminiscent of the comics. Like, like for example, what happens to um, the love interest when Stacy. That was quite ballsy that they did that. But unfortunately, they spoiled it in the trailer. Again, I'm not going to say what happens to her, but basically, if you've ever read a, a Spider-Man comic book, you'll know that they somewhat spoiled what happens to that character in the trailer. And, um, you know, there was other things like where he helps the young kid who, who's being bullied and helps him with his little model. That was sweet. I loved that scene, man. You know, the, the scene where, um, you know, towards the end of the movie, you know, one of the final scenes where there's the young kid dressed as, as Spider-Man and he's like, thanks for taking over for me. I'll tap in. And I thought that was that was a lovely scene. I really did like that. And um, that was um, sort of a homage to, to who this character is. And they definitely did a better job than the first movie in that sense. Because in the first movie, he was just a complete asshole. I just didn't like the character at all. So, like I said, there's a couple of improvements here. But it's like taking one step forward and two steps back. Because this movie is more boring than the first movie. The action sequences are worse. The special effects are worse. The writing is worse. And some of the acting performances are worse too. So, to me, I just think that this movie is... Again, it's like what, taking one step forward and two steps back. So, whereas the first one gets a, a 3 out of 10, this one gets a 2 out of 10. Maybe you could push it to a 3 out of 10, but I think a 2 out of 10 is more um, legitimate, if I'm being honest. I think that that's what this one warrants. A 2 out of 10, very disappointing. You know, massive disappointment. And, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, you know, stay tuned for more... Uh, sort of retrospective movie reviews. Thanks for watching. God bless.